here. How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. Catch you up to speed. Woke up this morning. It was supposed to be windy. There's supposed to be a big front hitting. Uh, my brother, that is my brother Sean. We met him a while back, but uh, my brother's in town. He had some pole vaulting stuff to do. And we woke up this morning and it was oil slick calm. The front was supposed to hit a little earlier. They pushed it back to about noon. So we very frantically jumped up, got our stuff together and decided to run out. We're gonna do a couple of Wahoo drifts. I really wanted to catch some lobster. I've been seeing a lot of lobster on the reef, but um, the water's crystal clear blue and it's nice and slick out. So I uh, figured we're gonna start with a couple of Wahoo drifts and kind of just see how the day goes. I'd, I'd really love to get him on a Wahoo. He's shot one a long time ago and it tore out halfway through the fight, um, which was a bummer, but uh, there we are. We're gonna look for Wahoo for a little bit and uh, kind of see where the day takes us. We'll see when this front hits and hopefully we find something to eat. Yikes. As you can see, the weather changed a bit. That front showed up. Went from flat calm to 30 knots and rain, so. No dice on the Wahoo. Um, I'm gonna give Sean a couple more minutes in the water, but uh, we're gonna, before we head in, because we're out here, it's obviously not ideal, but uh, because we're out here, the water's fairly clean, we're gonna try and look for some lobsters. And we'll talk a little bit about where you find them in the winter time and whatnot. It, uh, tactics change a little bit when the water cools down, so I'll see in the water here in a bit. back underwater everybody so as you saw we blanked on wahoo decided to run in and look for some lobster i uh, i spent a quite a quite a bit of time out there on the water so uh, the last few weeks of the grouper season i had been noticing a lot of lobster around um, in some areas so i decided we'd go take a peek and if you've ever been lobstering down here in the keys in the summertime it's very different most of the lobster are shallow and shore uh, and shallow ledges and coral heads. And in the winter time, the water changes quite a bit. The temperature changes a lot because of the cold fronts uh, and lobster can be a little particular when it comes to water temperature. So a lot of times in the winter, they are gonna move. If, uh, if you've ever been out to your summertime spots in the winter, a lot of times they're gonna be vacant or there'll be only shorts there. Um, and that's not always the case, but uh, for me, a lot of the times they, they evacuate the shallow water. So a lot of times in the winter, if I'm looking for lobster, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go a little bit deeper um, where the cold fronts haven't penetrated um, the depths and the water stays a little warmer on the bottom. Um, so that's what we were doing this day. We were, we were just in a, just a smidge deeper water, nothing crazy. I think it was about uh, 20 or 30 feet or so. But um, just to keep YouTube land real, I know a lot of this looks like highlights and we just land on a lobster every time. Uh, the entirety of this lobster segment, I think, was about four hours or so. I think we hit s maybe six or seven spots. Um, just like to keep it real. And one of the comments I get uh, quite a bit when it comes to these lobster videos is the fact that I'm using tools or a you know, snare or a tickle stick in a net. I know a lot of the West Coast US guys uh, over in Cali and whatnot. I don't believe they're allowed to use any type of tools. They have to hand harvest, which um, if I'm being honest, I don't agree with that. Whoever came up with that law, um, I think it could be helpful in the sense of keeping populations healthy, but if it's a beginner, which most people, a lot of people are beginners, and you cannot gauge the size of a lobster and you're trying to catch it by hand, there's a good chance you're going to rip the antenna and the legs off and you could damage or kill the lobster. So if you're doing that to a bunch of shorts, you're killing a bunch of lobster unnecessarily. So, for example, I use the snare on this lobster. I prefer the snare. It's just one thing in my hand instead of a tickle stick in a net. But um, use the snare to not damage the lobster in any way. Got it up. Got it up. It was just barely short. Um, and because I used a tool and didn't rip all the antenna and legs off, it's, the, the lobster is still healthy. I can drop it back down and return it to where I caught it, and there's no damage done. And I'm not talking about everyone. Um, I just wanted to address that. I do get those comments quite a bit, and uh, I, um, maybe there's some science behind it that I don't know about, but I, I think 
using tools is a more responsible way to harvest lobster. Something else I did want to mention, and I talk about it a little at the end of the video, but I know a lot of you guys don't watch all the way to the end. Um, I recently announced I won't be doing charters anymore, and I know a lot of people were kind of upset about that because uh, they missed their opportunity, but we are trying to come up with way, creative ways that help improve our businesses and still include some of the viewers. Um, this one being a little more limiting, but we are working on others. This is not the only one, but uh, what we're going to do is, um, starting now, uh, if you... Um, buy or list your home using my wife. Uh, she is a realtor down here in the Florida Keys. If you're shopping Florida Keys homes and you use her to buy or sell your home, um, you will get a free day out on the water with us, whether it's a fishing, diving, uh, sandbar trip, um, or if you want us to come out on your boat, say you're buying a house down here and you got a boat, you want us to show you around your area, we'd be happy to do that. Uh, we, re we fully realize that's extremely limiting to the, uh, the certain people that can uh, take advantage of that. This is not the only thing that we're working on that we are working on some other ways, but this is the one we're doing right now. I know uh, on YouTube it looks like we just eat seafood and drink pina coladas under palm trees all the time, but uh, the reality is we do have to make a living. We do have a lot of bills to pay. It's extremely expensive down here, so um, it's just one way that we're trying to be creative, you know, help uh, improve our businesses and hopefully include some of you guys. So. If you were buying or selling in the Keys, uh, my wife's info is in all of the descriptions of the video. You can reach out to her uh, on this video in particular. I'll put it in a pinned comment as well. I feel like I've already talked way too much, so I'm just gonna let you guys enjoy the rest of the video, enjoy the rest of the lobstering. I did a little bit of third person filming as well on some of the dives. Um, not a ton to talk about lobstering, but um, enjoy. Hopefully, you can zen out for a little bit. And uh, we made up a really nice recipe at the end, so appreciate you tuning in and enjoy the rest of the video. I've said it about 30 times, or I think I have, or at least I've thought it. It is honking. The camera. 
camera never does justice justice to the seas, but we're finding a few. We got, uh, I think there's five in there. Um, getting a little breezy. My brother's got to head back this evening. He's got a six hour drive. So I think we're going to hit one more spot, but as of, as of right now, we've got lobster for dinner. Um, one more spot and I think we're going to call it. So we'll see what we see here. We're going to head back. We've got enough to eat. I'm gonna send, this is my brother Sean, by the way. You've met him a long time ago, but it's been quite a while. Uh, he's down doing some pole vault and stuff, like I said, but got some tails to send him home with. He actually shot a nice yellow jack. Yeah. And um, we're done, long story short. It is sporty out here. <laughs> we're gonna get these back. I've got like a lobster bisque or something on the mine. We got a nice cold front for the next couple of days. So I'm thinking something uh, soupy and hearty and just delicious so we'll get these back get them cleaned up and uh, we'll get in the kitchen I'll see you there Woo -hoo -hoo. Yourself. all right so this is pretty straightforward cleaning these um, I did want to show you most people just rip the tail off and it kills the lobster a little slower, but there actually is a way to dispatch them if you do want to do it quickly and humanely. Um, you take a knife, just be careful if it's a soft lobster, even if it's not, just careful not to drive through your hand on the backside. Um, just right here on the chest, take a knife anywhere along this line normally. Um, again, just careful, do not jam it in there and, and cut through your hand. You go right there and twist. And that it normally see the nerves firing that lobster is gone so that's a humane one of the humane ways to do it so now I'm sure you've seen this before just in case you haven't I take a knife and cut in there a little bit I normally get the majority of it and um, I'm actually going to send the majority of these tails home with my brother because he doesn't get a lot of lobster up there. 
Uh, what we're going to need is the heads. We're going to use the heads and try and make a soup or a chowder or something. I haven't decided yet. Um, I don't make a lot of soups. But I would love to make more of them. But once you got the tail off, take your antenna. Oh. I messed that up. You're technically supposed to do it the other way, but it works multiple ways. Stick it in there and twist and it loosens it up. If you want to do it this way, you can take a shorter piece like that and stick it in backwards and the little spikes on there will grab it and it just cleans out cleans out the, the yucky in the tail. But that is it. Like I said, we're gonna save the heads and use all of those. Um, there's a lot of goodies left in there and a lot of flavor. So I'm gonna get the rest of these cleaned up. I'll see you in the kitchen. What a beautiful day. Got a high of 73, low of 68. It's just one of those perfect keys days. So um, obviously it's the next morning. I Last night I cooked uh, the lobster heads down and made a stock from it. Essentially crunched up. I crunched up the lobster heads a little bit. I feel like you get a little more flavor out of them. I crunched them up, put them in a pot, filled it up with water to match the amount of lobster heads I have. Simmer that for about an hour, hour and a half. Pull out the heads and I loosely strain uh, all the bits out. That way you're not getting any crunchies in there. But um, this is my stock. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but I promise if you cook with it, it is delicious. So what we're gonna do today, um, we're gonna make a pot of kind of a, what would be like a Bahamian conch chowder, but we're gonna use lobster. And I've got a little bit of yellow, yellow jack left that we're gonna throw in there as well. I'm a big fan of using what we have, so don't want that to go bad. Um, I've never actually done this, so I did look up some stuff online and um, kind of take an average of the recipes I saw and what sounded good and uh, throw a little bit of our flair on it. And um, I had to write everything down. This one, there's a lot of ingredients, so I'll actually, I normally don't do this, but once I'm done cooking, I'll give you some ballparks of what, how much of each uh, ingredient I put in there. That way, if you do want to try it, you can. It's, I know it can be a lot just trying to watch these videos and remember it all, but uh, I'll walk you through what we have, um, everything all together. Uh, so I've got some red, some large red potatoes, garlic, uh, an onion, white, yellow, doesn't matter, lime, uh, jalapeno or red chili. I have a red chili, so that's what we're going to use. Red bell pepper, green bell pepper, carrot, um, thick cut bacon. If you've got thick cut, I love cooking with thick cut better. Um, this is, I think it was four pieces of thick cut bacon. Uh, I've got some tomato paste, um, some red pepper flakes. If you like spice, bay leaves, salt. Not sure what happened there. The GoPro just shut itself off. But uh, I roasted a um, just roasted in the oven. Salt, pepper, olive oil, a pack of uh, cherry tomatoes. I've got some chopped tomatoes, uh, chopped or diced, depending on how how big you like them. Flour, uh, some cooking wine. This is my lobster stock. Again, not pretty, but lots and lots of flavor. I've got two lobster tails, some yellow jack, and uh, this morning I picked through some of the heads uh, that I had left from that stock. Um, when I made the stock last night, I picked through the heads. Uh, there's a little bit of meat left in there. So that is all you'll need. Again, I'll put the entire list in the description. Um, that way you got it a little easier if you want to try it. Again, never tried this, but let's get started. All right, so first we are going to brown our bacon. Um, just cook it like you'd cook bacon. So pull that off and set it aside. Again, cook it to how you like it. I personally like it a little chewy if I'm gonna do, especially like in a soup or a chowder or something. If you like it crunchy, make it crunchy. And we're gonna leave the bacon grease in here. So here I have red chili with the seeds, uh, red bell pepper, green bell pepper, uh, garlic, and carrot. I grated these two and minced the rest. Um, if you like it chunkier, do a little bit chunkier. So I left our bacon grease in there. We're just gonna brown the garlic. Oh, and I've got my potatoes here, diced, and then onion. Kind of somewhere in between. Again, 
or as I always say, these are guidelines. And I have learned if you start anything with garlic and onion, I'm gonna like it. All right, we'll add the rest. Red and green bell pepper, carrot and our red chili. Again, can switch that for a jalapeno. If you don't like spice, you can forgo it all together. We're just gonna cook these down for a couple minutes. You'll be able to tell when they're ready. That thing softens up just a little bit. Wow, smells good. Right? It's not like a measure. And I almost forgot. I don't even think I had that on the ingredient list. Celery. You're welcome. You gotta put celery in there. Thanks, babe. You can see, let me get you a little closer. Let's see if it's cooked down. Just softened everybody up a bit. Add our potatoes. And again, I'll try to put a more in-depth quantity list in the description. I know there's a lot of stuff going into this one. Potatoes, we're gonna do a couple tablespoons of flour. Everybody become friendly in there. Some pepper, a bit of salt. I'm gonna take some cooking wine. We're gonna deglaze. Let me show you what we're looking at here a little closer. That's where we're at now. We're gonna add our chopped tomatoes, diced tomatoes, whatever you like. Depends how chunky you like it. Sure, a tablespoon of tomato paste. And these are those roasted uh, cherry tomatoes. I just love these. I honestly, sometimes I just cook them just so I can eat them while I'm cooking, but they are delicious. Put that bacon back in there. Last is our lobster stock. Any type of seafood stock, I'm sure you could use a fish stock or crab. But because we got lobsters, this is what we're using. And again, it is not appealing looking, but I promise you it's got a lot of flavor. Kind of mix it up because all the stuff settles on the bottom. So I'm going to do about two and a half ladles because we're going to let this simmer for a while and it'll cook down. And I'm not going to add my lobster and fish yet. I'm going to let this go probably 45 minutes. I'm going to dice up that fish and lobster. And then once this is closer to done, we'll throw that in. I just don't want to overdo it. All right, so I got ahead of myself. I forgot some stuff. I'm going to throw a few bay leaves in there. Uh, a little bit of lime juice. I realized I had these set on the counter and didn't even throw them in. I want to see how this comes out once it cooks down, see how much spice we have. And uh, if we need more, I'll add that. But now, I'm going to let that simmer 45 and I'll see you then. So I let that go about an hour. Um, just on simmer, lid halfway off, wanted it to thicken up just a little bit. Um, Continuously stirring, stirring about every five minutes or so. You don't want it to get stuck on the bottom and burn at all. But that smells and looks amazing. I tested it on the way, on the way up simmering. Um, I added a little bit of red chili flake. It's, I give it a four out of five on spice. If you don't like spice, um, like I said, don't add the peppers or the, the red chili flakes. If you like spice, add a maybe a teaspoon. So I've got that's the some of the head meat I picked out from the um, the heads we had left when we made the stock. This is some yellow jack that we had left over. So we'll call this a fish and lobster chowder, Bahamian style. Just leave that on a simmer. Just mix this in. Man, I'm excited. I've never actually tried this. Uh, at home, this is one of my favorite, the red, the red conch chowders. Some of the places do it locally, but wow.
thrill with how it looks and smells. I'm just gonna let the, let, uh, excuse me. I'm going to throw the lid on and let the, uh, the heat just kind of finish those, turn the heat off, and that should cook that fish and lobster and, oh, we'll um, be ready to try it here shortly. See you in a bit. taste tester. Okay. An honest opinion. <laughs> Tina, you want to try it? Tell them. Tell the world. What do you have to say? Babe, don't show my mess. Oh my god. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, presentation looks beautiful. So we've been doing some changes to the office, if you can't tell. We swapped, uh, swapped Will's room in the office um, so we could both work in here. The other room is just a hair smaller, so it was hard to Hard to cram both desks in there. Is it good? Ooh, it's got a little bit of kick. It's a little spicy? We like spice. Mm. Is it too but spicy? No, 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 perfect spice for us. Mm. Um, mm. So Malin's in here doing her thing. She's, um, if you're not familiar, she is a real estate agent down here in the Florida Keys. And a lot of you guys have been asking questions on what uh, we'll be doing after the new year. Obviously the, the year is um, new. Um, <laughs> I quit offering chargers starting the beginning of this year. And we're making a lot of changes. Um, I'm tackling some new projects, just shifting, thing up, shifting things up a bit. Uh, something I did want to mention, we are coming up with fun, creative, obviously beneficial ways for us to still make a living, but um, still get out on the boat and hopefully get some people out on the boat. Uh, and one of the things that we are going to offer is if you buy or list your house with Madeline, you can come out and spend the day on the boat with us. Um, or we can come out on your boat or show you around town if you end up uh, buying a house down here in the Keys or if you're leaving the Keys and you want to list your house with Madeline, um, you can spend the day with us on the boat or on land, go to some of your favorite restaurants, whatever it may be. We're down for a good time. But, um, <laughs> but um, I know that limits it to only a select few people, but we are working on some fun ways. I, I have people, when I announced that I'm done with charters, they just assume that I hate the ocean and I won't be going out there still. I love the ocean. I'm still going out there all the time, just not on charters. I don't want to fill my calendar with charters. So we're working on fun, creative ways to help our businesses, but still get some of you viewers out there um, here and there on the boat with us. Uh, we didn't want to completely shut it down, but again, being creative, I'm rambling. But um, This is really Is it good? good? Like, first off, I love that it's chunky. I haven't, so I haven't much, tried it yet. So. So, do you want to try it? No, I like, actually, yes. It's really good. I like chunky. That's why I went with that. Yeah, me too. And everything's cooked perfectly. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. When you get hot, I don't really preference Florida That's... lobster that much, or spiny lobster, but this is good. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can't tell that it's... I mean, you can, I mean, you can, you but, can it's not, but it's not like it's the not flavor. in a bad way. Yeah, not in a bad way. It's like cooked really well. Love it. Wow. Yeah, I'm thrilled with that. It does have a little heat. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, anyways, that's all we have. Again, buy or sell your home with Madeline and you will get to come out on the boat with us. <laughs> Spend the day with us. We'll show you around the keys. Um, and um, I'm rambling, but I did want to share some information. Coming this year, I'm working on some new merch. I do have some projects I hope was hoping to have them up by now, but they're not ready. So I'll keep you guys filled in on that when, uh, when they get going. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. That was a lot of talking. <laughs> I'm done. We'll see you on the next one. Say bye, Tina.